pine pitch glue, primitive hot melt glue, if you will, heat activated, uh, great putty, great filler, great mastic glue. Hey guys, Ryan Gill here with Hunt Primitive where we entertain, educate, and inspire. And on this channel, we typically do a lot of primitive build or hunting videos just like this one. So if it's your first time, do please consider subscribing. But today, I am going to teach you how to probably build the best pitch glue that you have ever used in your life. Now what is pitch glue, you might ask? Well, that is basically a primitive man's hot melt glue. That's for what we use to attach arrowheads to arrows or spear points to spear shafts or uh, all sorts of different other uh, glue type of projects you might have in store for like say gluing leather onto bow handles or who knows what all. It's also a great uh, water sealer so you can put this on sinew and that kind of stuff and it really waterproofs and keeps moisture out. So honestly, I think that this probably is going to be a great video for you to watch. A lot of other people use different methods and they make different pitch glues and I think a lot of them work. I really do. I really like the ones that I make and the ones that I use and I'm going to teach you how to do it right now. Okay, so here's the bowl that I use for refining the pitch and you can see there's a hole back here on the other side and I used this flint drill to actually drill through this piece of pottery. And it's actually quite simple to do. I'll just demonstrate at least starting another spot. It only takes about five minutes and you can drill a hole. If you can see the powder that's starting there, we could drill another hole. It doesn't even hurt to have a couple extra holes, but one is sufficient for my needs on this project. Now when it comes to looking for pine resin, this is kind of what you want. It's only mildly sticky. Uh, it's pretty hard stuff. This is a little bit soft, but these are really clean, little small nuggets. So we'll go ahead and throw those in the pot. But mostly what you're going to be looking for and finding are these hard nuggets. And so these, these aren't soft, they're not sticky, but it's hard resin. So this is like pine sap that has really gotten hard over time. This is what you really want to look for. The runny sap is what a lot of people collect and that's not what you want. You don't want the runny sap, you want these hard resin nuggets. Okay, so with our pot with the hole drilled in it, we're just going to go ahead and put nuggets, probably not all of them at once, but we're going to put several of these nuggets and we're going to cycle these some in and out as we uh, kind of extract the pine resin from some, we'll pull them out with a stick and we'll put new ones in, but if you can kind of see the old ones that are down here at the bottom, there's a lot of junk that's mixed in with these. There's a lot of sticks and debris and dirt and bark. And uh, we want to make sure that we get rid of all that. And so that's why we're melting it down in this pot, uh, keeping it below that whole line, of course. All right, so now what we just want to do is set our pot next to the fire, either this close, you can get it closer if you need to, uh, experiment with it a little bit. But what we don't want is we don't want this stuff to burn or really boil. It's going to fizzle quite a bit, but we're trying to melt down this resin off of all of the debris. So, of course, as you set your pot here, angle it so the hole faces uphill. But it's getting pretty hot in here, so we're just going to take our time and be really patient with this and let this melt down slowly all on its own, and we're not going to force it. Okay, so as this starts to liquefy, we're going to be dripping it through the hole. And what we're doing here is, it takes a little bit of time obviously to do this, but we're going to drain some of this off and it'll start to harden up a little bit and then we'll reheat it. But what we're doing is we're really filtering out a lot of the sticks and the leaves and all that kind of stuff. And you can see there, that's actually a perfect example of how we're separating all these sticks and everything from this really valuable pine resin. And what we have left over, obviously after we pour it off, is some really nice, clean pine resin. There's a little bit of tiny debris in here, and that's okay. But you'll notice what you pour off and what's left over is a night and day difference. That's some good stuff right there. Now we could actually use it like this if we absolutely had to, but it's a little bit too hard. So what we want to do, we want to add a little bit of temper, and then 
probably a little bit of animal grease to give it a little bit of pliability. And of course this is all the junk that's left over and it's really brittle at this point and this is what a lot of people end up grinding up with their pine pitch glue and then it doesn't turn out very good or it's too lumpy. It's because they didn't really extract the good stuff off of the bark and everything else like we did. So we can just get rid of that. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to make charred yucca cordage. Okay, and we keep it in the cordage because it's easier to process later, but we're going to go ahead and put it inside this clay pot. And we don't want to shock it into the fire, so we're going to set it off to the side and just let it warm up for a little bit, and we'll rotate that once in a while. Because what happens is sometimes if you just put pottery straight into it, you can shock it and break it. We want to warm it up first. Then we'll go ahead and move the pot right into the the coals. We've already got a nice little bed of coals going here anyway. I'm going to level it out a little bit. And then I'm going to top it with a rock. And I don't want to necessarily put the fire right on it, especially right off the bat, but what we're trying to do is char that with that uh, yucca cordage without actually burning it up. We don't want to catch on fire essentially making char cloth, but with uh, yucca cordage. That should be good. Knock that off. Yep, that looks pretty good. We're gonna leave the pot in here. I'm gonna pull these out. Perfect. We're gonna leave the pot in the fire to just cool down completely natural. We don't wanna shock it. But that stuff is good and charred. And those are just about perfect. So we're gonna take all of our charred yucca cordage, and I'm gonna use a shell for this. You could use another piece of pottery and just completely pulverize it. And of course, this is why we char it, um, is so it will finally break up. But I'll show you what it looks like when it's finally broke up. But just using a a shell or another piece of pottery and then a rounded stick and really just break it up and pulverize it. And you're going to really want to make sure that it's broken up, that there's no great big long fibers. It should be all just little teeny tiny short fibers. Now hopefully you probably can't see it as well as I can, but it is absolutely these little tiny hair fibers. And this is a lot like, um, like fiberglass and concrete. And because these fibers are stronger than just normal charcoal fibers, this will give us a really good sort of temper to make our pitch even stronger. Now a lot of people do use uh, stuff like rabbit or deer droppings or just normal charcoal but I really like the uh, the charred yucca or even nettles or some sort of heavy cordage that you would make char it and then break it up and when you see the difference in how this looks compared to normal charcoal you'll understand why it's a, it's a great uh, binding agent or uh, fiberglass sort of like temper to add to it okay so we're gonna melt it all back down with fire Hot. And we're going to go ahead, now that it's, uh, we got a nice little stick here, and spin it up, make sure that it's uh, good and melted, which it is, perfect. While we're stirring it, we're going to pour in, kind of slowly, our uh, fiber, and we don't, we probably don't even need all of it, honestly. It's a good amount. Don't want too much. It looks pretty good. I'm not going to add any more of that. I do everything by eye, which is not necessarily great, but when you're working with natural materials, you don't always have consistent materials. Okay, so we're going to stir this up really good. Now it's going to still be a little bit brittle, and so we need to add a little bit of animal grease, and this is a little bit of bear grease. we got to be very careful with how much of this we add. This is going to give it a little bit of flexibility, but if we're a little too crazy with it, it can hurt our overall mixture and so just from experience I'm going to add about that much to it and I'm going to really stir this in. I'm going to stir this in 
for quite some time. If it starts to to stiffen up on me, I'll go ahead and add, uh, I'll put it back in the fire for a little bit. But for the most part, I want to make sure that this is really mixed well. So one thing about pine pitch glue that's really important uh, is that it's either going to end up too brittle or it's going to end up too uh, pliable and too spongy. You're not necessarily spongy, but like just too weak, like too pliable, like it's got too much grease in it. So we have to be very careful about how much grease that we add to this. But a little bit is important. Now a lot of people might say, well, I add beeswax to mine. And, uh, and that's great too. In fact, I, I think beeswax is a wonderful thing to add to it. If you're talking about uh, North American pine pitch glue, you have to remember that it's the European and the African bees that create the honey that we're, the honey and the wax that we're used to today. The North American native bees do not create the wax that we're used to. And so in place of that, we use an animal grease like coon grease or bear grease or deer grease or you know anything along those lines, any sort of fatty animal. I mean, shoot, even seal grease would probably be would be very good depending on your location if you had seals. And so by adding a little bit of grease, it's going to give us a little bit of pliability, but we got to be very careful to the amount that we add because we can get rid of a lot of the sticky component and then also make it to where this stuff is so flexible that it's like putty all the time. And that's great if we're making like a bow sealer or an arrow sealer or something like that. We're trying to make an actual glue, a mastic to hold in a projectile. We need to make sure that it's going to still stay very hard. So in this point, what you're seeing me do is <clears throat> I'm dipping a little bit on and I'm going to let it dry. I'm not afraid to reheat all of this and add more of one component or the other. I think we've got plenty of temper in here, but now what I'm doing is I'm just spinning it around on the stick as it's, uh, you can see it's still hot and it's falling, and so I just kind of rotate it around. I may blow on it. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to dry this out. I think I've got a pretty good mix, but I'm going to test it before I'm completely done. So I'm going to keep just this little bit on the end of the stick, and I'm going to rotate it around until it's cooled down and it's solid. And then we can test it to see, do we need to reheat this, melt it all back down, and add more grease? Um, potentially, if you put too much grease, then of course, you know, you you don't ruin it, but you have to add more pine resin. So now you got to go back and make more pine resin to add to it. Okay, so we let it dry a little bit, and as it's drying, I can squeeze it. I know y'all probably can't hear it, but it has a little bit of a crackle to it. And as it gets hard, I try to shove my fingernail into it, and it's really hard, and I can feel it's a little bit too hard. I'd rather be too hard than too soft for sure. So let's go ahead, and I'm going to stick that back down in there and just let that melt itself back off for a few minutes. And we'll add a little bit more of the animal grease to it. One other trick as well that I haven't really uh, talked to you too much about because I don't think I need it yet. I like the resin that I have, but if you get to a point where maybe you have some really hard resin, the stuff I had, I could still bend a little bit. It wasn't like rock hard, pretty hard, but you can, if you get to a point where you think you're adding too much animal grease, but it's still just too brittle, is get a little bit of more of the runny sap and put the runny sap in it because that'll help at least retain some of the stickiness of it as opposed to the more of of the animal grease you add, the more it's going to cut the adhesion properties. Okay, second time I think was a charm on this one, so I can just dent it slightly with my fingernail. So when it's time to test this stuff, that's what you want to do is you want to be able to just push really hard and dent it and without it snapping. If it completely breaks, then you need to add more of like animal grease to it but that this is pretty close to exactly where we want it so we're going to go ahead and pull it and then we'll build the stick up the rest of the way okay so you see we build it up here pretty nicely we'll go ahead add a little bit more and that's really what you do it's kind of just like tar in a way you build up a little bit more spin it around and you can really construct these long glue sticks out of it 
and it doesn't even have to be completely supported with the stick. I've done some experiments where I've run it out pretty far and uh, they end up do snapping a little bit. So, but you don't need the whole thing supported by the stick. So you can, you can run up a pretty good glob on here and it really is a beautiful heat activated primitive glue stick. So just remember as this stuff dries, when you're ready to use it again, you just run it over a little bit of fire and it'll soften it up and you wipe it on what you need to use it. Uh, you know, hafting arrowheads or sealing sinew or, or gluing a handle wrap onto a bow. Uh, lots of different things, but just heat it back up and use it. And of course, it, it will stick to you really well, really well while it's, uh, while it's uh, still quite tacky. So, yeah, it's kind of a mess at that point. It's just like tar. So, if you want to work it a little bit, lick your finger before you touch it, and then that way you can push it around. You get a little bit of a moisture barrier in there. All right, guys, there you go. It's pine pitch glue, primitive hot melt glue, if you will, heat activated, uh, great putty, great filler, great mastic glue. And I really hope this video teaches you how to build the best pitch glue you have ever used in your life. Because honestly, I think this stuff is absolutely amazing and I think you'll love it just as much as I do. Now there is a fortunate and an unfortunate side to this story, okay, is with all the other stuff that I'm doing constantly, I like to make my own pitch glue, that's for sure. But I go through an absolute massive amount of this stuff and I cannot keep up with just making it to use with all the orders, all my own stuff, everybody wants to buy pitch glue, but I've got something that honestly I do believe is just as good. And this is, there's two little blocks of pitch glue in here and it's made by my buddy Bob Berg and that's what I sell on my website is at huntprimitive.com. And I don't know his process on making his, but I tell you, uh, I have no problem putting my name next to it and saying that this stuff is great. It's every bit as good as mine, maybe a little bit better, maybe a tiny bit worse. Honestly, it's so comparable, I don't think you could even tell the difference. I really, really like this stuff, and I have no problem telling you guys that if you need pitch glue to go ahead and pick this up at huntprimitive.com. If you want to make your own, obviously that's the most fun, rewarding way to go about it. So please, by all means, make your own. Uh, you, the decision's up to you. You can either pick this up or you can learn to make your own. Either way, if you follow the instructions and kind of get an idea of what you're looking for, I think you're going to have the best pitch glue that you've ever used in your life. So thanks for following along and we're going to catch you on the next adventure.